I'm Tiffany, a 26-year-old nurse with enough life experience to realize that things aren't always easy. The customary mayhem was broken on the day the rock band arrived in town. My soul yearned for their music more than my next breath, and it was my escape. Unaware that it would alter my life, I made the reckless decision to go to their performance by myself that evening. The mood was electric with anticipation as the arena was full. I pushed my way through the mob and found a place that seemed to be reserved for me. I literally ran into him at that point. He was a tall man with a cheeky smile and a band t-shirt that looked like it had seen better days. I said, more in surprise than irritation, hey, watch it. I'm sorry, I didn't see you there, he said, grinning broadly. Are you here by yourself? I said, my defense is up. Yeah, and from the look of it, so are you. The sound of his laughter seemed to pierce the pre-concert hush. My name is Tom, and I would definitely not miss this. These men serve as my life's music. I said, Tiffany, and extended my hand. He grudgingly held on with a tight, somehow comforting grasp. The same thing here. I grew up listening to their songs. We spoke as though we had been friends for years rather than minutes. I hadn't laughed that hard in a long time, but Tom had a way of making me laugh. Together, we were engrossed in the music when the performance began, but we were also isolated in our own small world. Neither of us wanted the evening to end after the encore. Is there not a good cafe nearby? Tom looked into my eyes as he asked. Maybe, I responded, taking the lead. In sharp contrast to the commotion of the music, the cafe was silent. We located a quiet spot where we could talk as readily as the coffee. Well, nurse, with a tone of respect and wonder, Tom remarked, I bet you have stories. I can't even begin to count. How about you? What's the matter with you? I leaned in and asked. I am employed in the id industry. With a tinge of shame in his eyes, he shrugged. It pays the bills, but it's not as exciting as saving lives. We discussed everything and nothing, from our everyday annoyances to our wildest fantasies. It seemed effortless and natural. Hours had gone by before we realized it. Probably better get going, Tom grudgingly remarked. However, I don't want our conversation to end here. I confessed, feeling a connection I couldn't quite put my finger on. We switched phones and entered our numbers in the hopes of receiving a call. Something changed inside of me as we said our goodbyes. I left feeling lighter, my heart thumping in my chest. But perhaps it was the music, the evening, or just Tom. It was time to meet Tom's family, or more precisely, his mother, after a few months of dating him. He had been honest about living with her, claiming that she was his only relative. After all, my own family consisted just of my grandmother, so I respected that. Tom lived in a small, comfortable home with a garden that was in need of little TLC. As we got closer to the door, he added, Mom's inside, with a tinge of anxiety in his voice. I realized then how crucial this was to him, and all of a sudden I was the one who was twitchy. A woman in her late fifties with a tangle of curls in her hair and keen eyes met mine when the door opened. She said, so, you're Tiffany, with a tone in her voice that I couldn't quite identify. Was it interest? Fear? I said, nice to meet you, Mrs. Johnson, and after a moment's hesitation, she accepted my hand. She led us into the living room and said, call me Linda. It was tidy, with pictures of Tom at different ages. He was obviously the focus of her universe. Linda jumped right in as soon as we sat down. Tom informs me that you work as a nurse. It's a challenging job. Do you intend to stay that long? Sensing where this was going, I nodded. I enjoy my work, but I also intend to continue my education in order to possibly become a doctor in the future. Linda's eyes squinted slightly. 
a physician. A lot of school, that is, costly as well. In an attempt to calm things down, Tom dove in. Tiffany is really enthusiastic about her job, Mom. It's among her qualities that I find admirable. Linda's frown softened as she looked from me to Tom and back again. My rock has always been Tommy here. It was just the two of us when his dad departed. You know I've given him everything. Tom looked at me, and we exchanged a wordless message. He was pulled between the two most significant people in his life, and I understood that this was difficult for him. I rely on Tom for a lot, Linda added. He has shown me such kindness by providing me half of his monthly pay. After everything I've given up, it's only right. The tension in the room was evident, and the air felt thicker. I was at a loss for words. Even with me in the photo, it was obvious that Linda anticipated this arrangement to last. And what about your family, Tiffany? Linda's question snapped me back to the moment. I was raised by my grandmother, I said, my voice steady. My parents died when I was young. Grandma's all I have. Linda nodded, a strange satisfaction in her eyes. Well, if you and Tom are serious, I'd expect you to contribute as well. $800 a month should cover it. I choked on the tea I'd been sipping. $800? Tom's hand found mine under the table, squeezing it gently. We'll work something out, Mom. Tiffany and I are a team now. When Tom and I decided to tie the knot, we knew it wouldn't be a lavish affair, but nothing prepared me for the battle over our wedding plans. Linda had her own ideas about saving money, which basically meant cutting down our guest list to a handful and scrapping any unnecessary celebrations. I wanted simple, sure, but I also wanted some joy, a celebration of us. One evening, as we sat down with Linda to discuss the wedding plans, the tension was thicker than the coffee Tom had brewed. So I was thinking. Linda began in that way that told you she wasn't just thinking. She was deciding. Why waste money on a big venue when we have a perfectly good backyard? Tom squeezed my hand under the table, a silent plea for patience. Mom, Tiffany and I were hoping for a bit more, you know. Celebration, not just a backyard thing. Linda's eyes narrowed, her lips pursing in that familiar line of disapproval. And who's going to pay for this celebration? You two. With what money? I took a deep breath, readying myself. We've been saving, Linda, and it's not like we want something extravagant. Just something a bit more special than the backyard. Linda scoffed, special. You think spending money you don't have on one day is special. You know what's special. Security, not starting your married life in debt. I could feel my patience wearing thin, but I held my ground. We understand the value of money, Linda. We're not talking about going into debt. Just a modest celebration at a small venue. We've done the math. Despite Linda's protests, we managed to reach a compromise of sorts. A small venue, close family and friends, and a strict budget. Linda insisted on overseeing the catering, claiming she could cut costs, which meant we ended up with a buffet that was more potluck than professional. On the day of our wedding, the venue looked, well, modest. My grandma, the one person from my family there, whispered to me as I readied myself, this Linda, she's a piece of work, isn't she? Just remember, dear, you're marrying Tom not his mother. The ceremony was short and sweet. Tom looked handsome, and when I walked down the aisle toward him, the look in his eyes told me we'd made the right choice. It was our moment, and even Linda couldn't tarnish that. At the reception, as guests mingled over the homemade buffet, Linda took it upon herself to remind everyone how much money. We'd saved, just think what they can now put towards their future. She announced to a group of our friends, who nodded politely, their expressions a mix of amusement and sympathy. Tom's best man, Mike, 
a childhood friend who knew the family dynamics all too well, leaned over to us with a grin. Hey, at least she didn't charge entry. I laughed, the tension of the past weeks melting away in the warmth of the moment. Tom wrapped an arm around my waist, pulling me close. We did it, Tiffany. Despite everything, we did it. Yeah, I agreed, leaning my head against his shoulder. And now we start our lives together, just us and Linda. Tom added with a wry smile, earning him a playful jab in the ribs from me. Settling into married life with Tom was like navigating a boat on choppy waters. Our tiny rented apartment became our haven, a place where we planned to build our future together. But the shadow of financial strain loomed large over us, darkening even our brightest moments. One chilly evening, as we sat huddled over our budget spreadsheet, the reality of our situation hit me hard. Look at this, Tom, I said, pointing at the screen. After rent, bills, and your mom's $800, there's barely anything left for us. Tom rubbed his eyes, weary from the long day. I know, Tiffany, but what can we do? Mom depends on that money. I sighed, frustration bubbling inside me. But does she really need that much? We're barely scraping by as it is, and we've been putting off so many things, like fixing the car, and even thinking about a down payment for a house. Tom's expression hardened, a defensive edge creeping into his voice. Tiffany, we've been over this. My mom raised me by herself. It's my duty to take care of her now. The argument ended with us in a tense silence, each stewing in our own stubbornness. But it didn't end there. Linda, ever the persistent one, took to calling me regularly, each conversation a thinly veiled reminder not to forget the $800 monthly tribute to her bank account. And when calls didn't cut it, she'd appear at our doorstep, lamenting her hard life and hinting heavily that a little more financial support wouldn't go amiss. I did my best to ignore the hints, to smile and nod and change the subject, but it grated on me. The constant pressure, the relentless reminders of a debt Tom felt we owed. Finally, one evening after another of Linda's visits, I couldn't hold it in any longer. Tom, we need to talk about your mom. I started, my frustrations bubbling to the surface. I'm tired, Tom, tired of the hints, the constant pressure for more money. We're saving for a down payment for our future. Can't you see that? Tom's face went from puzzle to dark in seconds. My mom is always right, Tiffany, he said, his voice icy. You have no right to talk about her like that. She sacrificed everything for me. His words hit like a slap. So what? Our plans, our future, doesn't count for anything? I shot back, anger rising. That was it. Tom shut down, walls up, and suddenly we were two strangers living in the same space. He wouldn't talk to me, not really. Our conversations dwindled to nothing replaced by messages left on stickers on the fridge. Need milk, working late, the bare minimum of communication. One rare evening, when the silence felt a bit less oppressive, I decided to broach the subject. The words tumbled out of me before I could think better of it. Tom, do you ever think about, you know, us having kids? Tom, who'd been half focused on some bills, looked up, his expression unreadable. Kids, Tiffany, you know how mom feels about that. She's already stretched thin with just us helping out. Yeah, but it's not about her, is it? It's about us, what we want, I said, a hint of desperation creeping into my voice. Tom sighed, setting the bills aside. I know, I know. But think about it, the money, the time, how are we supposed to manage all that? Plus, mom's outright against it. She says it's too much expense, too much hassle. I felt a flash of anger and frustration. So what? Her word is law now. What about what we want, Tom? What about our life together? 
The room went quiet again, the air thick with words we couldn't seem to say. Tom finally broke the silence. I just don't think now's the right time. Yes, maybe later, when things are better. The next day, Linda's unannounced visit threw gasoline on the already smoldering embers. I heard you two talking about kids. She started, her tone accusatory, as if the mere thought was an affront to her. Yeah, so, I said, my patience wearing thin. Linda's eyes narrowed. So you think you can just bring kids into this mess? You can barely take care of yourselves. Where do you think the money for that will come from? Out of what you should be giving me? Her words stunned me, not because they were true, but because of the blatant disregard for our autonomy, our desires as a couple. It's our life, Linda, our decision. I shot back, my voice firm. Your decision? No, my son's decision, and he knows better than to make a foolish mistake like that. Linda countered, her voice rising. The argument spiraled from there, voices raising, words that couldn't be taken back flying between us. It ended with me saying something I'd never thought I'd have to. Maybe we shouldn't see each other for a while. This, this is too much. Linda left in a huff, and Tom, when he found out, sided with her. Our home felt more like a battleground, each of us entrenched in our positions. The idea of starting a family now was no man's land between us. It started with a phone notification that blinked innocently enough, but held a punch that knocked the wind out of me. Tom had transferred $11,000 to his mom this month, not the usual $800. My mind raced, confusion and anger swirling together. When I confronted him, his response was as cold as the look in his eyes. It's my decision, Tiffany. It's for my mom, he said, his voice flat, leaving no room for discussion. But we agreed on a budget, Tom. We have our own needs, our own plans. How could you just change that without even talking to me? I shot back, my voice rising with every word. Tom shrugged, a dismissive gesture that stung more than I expected. Things change. I don't have to consult you on everything. That was the moment I felt it, the crack in what I thought was solid, the betrayal of our partnership. But the worst was yet to come. Days later, a friend from work, Carrie, called me. Her voice hesitant, she said, Tiffany, I hate to be the one to tell you this, but I think you should know. She trailed off, the paws heavy with dread. What is it, Carrie? I urged, a sinking feeling in my stomach. I saw Tom's profile on a dating site. He even messaged me, not realizing who I was at first. I'm so sorry, she finished, her voice a mix of sympathy and discomfort. My world stopped. The air left my lungs in a rush, and I felt dizzy. Are you sure? I managed to whisper, clinging to a thread of hope that it was all a mistake. Yes, I'm sure. I can send you the screenshots if you want, Carrie offered, and true to her word, she did. The evidence was undeniable. There was Tom's picture, his profile, and the messages he'd sent, flirting, suggesting they meet up. The betrayal cut deep, a wound I wasn't sure could ever heal. When Tom came home that night, I was waiting, the screenshots glowing accusingly on my tablet. His reaction was one of shock, then anger, not at being caught, but at being confronted. What, you're spying on me now? Invading my privacy. He exploded. The audacity of his anger was almost laughable. Spare me, Tom. How long? How long have you been doing this? I demanded, my voice shaking with emotion. Tom's anger fizzled out, replaced by a resignation that was somehow worse. I don't know, Tiffany. A while, I guess. I just, I needed something else. Something more. More than me. More than us. I said, the reality settling in like a stone in my stomach. Yeah, I guess so, he admitted, and with those words, 
the last of my hope evaporated. I want a divorce, I said, the words tasting bitter on my tongue. Tom looked at me, then really looked at me, and for a moment, I saw a flicker of the man I married. But it was gone as quickly as it came, replaced by a cold indifference. Fine, he said simply, if that's what you want. The divorce proceedings were quick, devoid of the messy entanglements that come with shared assets or children. I moved back to my grandmother's house, the only place that still felt like home, carrying with me the pain of betrayal, but also a sense of relief. Three months post-divorce, life had started to settle into a new kind of normal, or as normal as it could get without Tom and his mom, Linda in the picture. That is, until my world got rocked again, but this time by loss. My grandmother passed away, leaving behind a void no one could fill. Along with a heartache, it came a surprise. She left me her house at a hefty sum of $800,000, just when I thought things couldn't get any more surreal, Linda showed up at my doorstep, bursting with a kind of frantic excitement that felt out of place given the recent funeral. Tiffany, darling, I heard about your inheritance. What a blessing. Linda gushed, not wasting a second on pleasantries. I stared at her incredulously. Linda, what are you doing here? She brushed past me into the house as if we were still family. Now that you've come into this money, you can surely afford to help me out a bit more. Not just the usual $1,000, but maybe double that. And oh, a small gift wouldn't hurt. Something nice, expensive. Her words were like a slap in the face, each one more absurd than the last. But it was her next statement that really threw me. And since you're so well off now, I suppose it's okay for you to have a baby with Tom. I mean, with this kind of money, why not? I couldn't help it. Laughter bubbled up from within me, loud and uncontrollable. Linda, you do know Tom and I are divorced, right? Three months ago, your son and I are done. The look on her face was priceless, a mix of shock, disbelief, and something that looked suspiciously like panic. Divorced? But, but Tom never said, why would he hide that? Maybe because he didn't want to crawl back to mommy's house. Or maybe he thought you'd cut him off financially. I shrugged, the absurdity of the situation not lost on me. Linda fumbled for her phone, dialing Tom in a frenzy. The conversation was short and heated, her voice rising with every word until she finally hung up, her face pale. He said it's true. Said he didn't tell me because he wanted to maintain independence independence. Now he tells me this when we could have been rich. Linda, it's time for you to go, I said, my patience wearing thin. She stood defeated, but then with a last-ditch effort, she turned to me. Tiffany, can't you reconsider for the sake of the family? Tom made a mistake, but... I cut her off with another round of laughter. Linda, there is no family, not between me and Tom. And after everything, you really think I'd go back to him. Please leave. One morning, as I sat in the kitchen with a cup of coffee, the sun casting gentle patterns on the table, there was a knock at the door. Hesitant, I approached, half expecting Linda, or worse, Tom to be on the other side. Instead, I found an old friend from nursing school, Maya, her face bright with a smile that was both comforting and contagious. I heard about your grandma, Tiffany. I'm so sorry. And then I heard about, well, everything else, Maya said, stepping inside as I waved her in. We sat down, and over coffee, we caught up on life, on the turns mine had taken, and on her adventures since we last spoke. It was Maya who, after hearing my story, looked me dead in the eye and said, Tiffany, it's time. Time to move on for real. You've got this chance, this freedom. What's stopping you from taking the leap? Her words struck a chord. I've been thinking, I started, my mind racing with possibilities. Perhaps it's time for me to return to school as I've always desired, 
earn that degree and pursue a career in which I'm enthusiastic. Yes, Maya's delight was evident as she clapped her hands. That's the essence. Look, you're still standing despite the curveballs life has dealt you. And now you have this amazing chance to accomplish something for yourself. I felt like I was on fire after talking to Maya. It gave me the motivation I needed to decide to finally go on with a purpose. That evening, determined to further my profession in a way I could only imagine, I began looking into programs. However, life tests you in a humorous way. One evening, as I was getting used to this new chapter, Tom showed up at my door, looking just like the man I had assumed I knew. With a tense tone to his voice that I wasn't used to, he said, Tiffany, can we talk? A part of me was inquisitive, and another part was cautious, so I hesitated. All right, Tom, speak. He looked about as though he was trying to find the proper words and moved uneasily. I've heard about your inheritance and your plans to return to school with it. Tiffany, that's, that's fantastic. I crossed my arms and arched an eyebrow. I'm grateful, Tom. Was there anything else? He let out a big, exhausted sigh. I suppose I was simply checking to see if we had a chance. I've been thinking a lot. I interrupted him, saying, no, Tom, in a stern yet loving manner. We don't have any hope anymore. I've moved on, truly moved on. And you ought to as well. I felt a weight lift as he turned to go, a definitive conclusion to a chapter that had gone on for too long. I became more motivated and concentrated in the days that followed. Free from the expectations and letdowns of the past, I was creating a life on my own terms. I had a feeling of purpose for my education, and I was free to follow my aspirations without limitations because to my grandmother's wealth.